how to there we go all right let's see how much can i zoom in four perfect okay so the first example is are using orders of operations so remember that we are using pem dots but if you've seen those countless uh, social media fights over order of operations, then you know that PEMDAS is a lie. So the first two things are true about PEMDAS. So it's parentheses, exponents, and then we were taught that multiplication comes first, then division, then addition, and subtraction. But here's where we were lied to. So PEMDAS can also be the first two hold true, parentheses, exponents. And if division comes first, we will first do division. So you could have PED MAS. You could do parentheses, exponents, division, then multiplication, and then addition and subtraction. Or, or you could also have parentheses, exponents, division, multiplication, subtraction, then addition. So if subtraction became before addition, you would do subtraction first. So now you have PEMDAS, PEDMAS, PEM, PEDMSA, <laughs> and then there's, of course, one more, I think. One more to add to this craziness. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, subtraction, addition. I think that's the last combo. So you could have parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, and the subtraction comes first, subtraction, then addition. Yes, Katie, it is life-changing. <laughs> Just know the only things that stay true are parentheses and exponents. So PEMDAS, PEDMAS, PEDMSA, and PEMDSA. <laughs> there you go. So those are the order of operations we will follow as they come when we read it left to right. Okay. You're like, my childhood, it was all a lie. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started. First one, you have negative 24 divide eight times five squared plus 60 divide two. So first up is this exponent. So that's what we're gonna handle first. So I'll just rewrite this, negative 24 divide eight times five squared, which is 25 plus 68 divide two. Okay, now still reading left to right. First up is division. So we see division here and that's where we'll start. So negative 24 divide eight is going to give me negative three times 25 plus 68 divide two. So we see that we're working this thing left to right. So working it left to right. Okay, next is that multiplication. So okay. negative three times 25, you have negative 75 plus 68 divide two. Okay, now from left to right, you have negative 75 plus 68 divide two. So we have to skip over here because division comes first. Okay. And rewriting this negative 75 plus 68 divide 2 is 34. And negative 75 plus 34 is what? Is that 41? Yeah. Negative 41. 
Okay, guys. Any questions on that? No, no questions. Oh, good. Oh, good. Okay. Let's keep rolling. We'll go over to two. Okay. So same thing. Follow order of operations. You have seven plus two times the square root of 15 plus parentheses, negative one minus three squared minus six. Okay. So let's get started on this. So this two is connected to the square root by multiplication. So this is two times that whole square root. Okay. So we are going to work inside the square root first. So first thing up is the parentheses inside the square root. So we will have seven plus two times the square root of 15 plus and negative one minus three gives me that negative four squared minus six. Okay, so you have handled the operations inside those parentheses within the square root. And now still working order of operations. We see that inside the square root, you now have an exponent. So seven plus two times the square root of 15 plus and negative four squared. So negative four squared means negative four times negative four, which will give me a positive 16. So I get 15 plus 16 minus six. Okay, now still going. Next step is still working inside that square root. We have 15 plus 16. Let me move over. All right. So rewriting this, seven plus two times the square root of 15 plus 16, which is 31 minus six. All right, still working inside that square root. You now have 31 minus six. So seven plus two times the square root of 25. Okay, now we handle the square root of 25. This will become seven plus two times five. Because remember that this two was connected to that square root the whole time by multiplication. So seven plus two times five. And one more order of operation here. You get two times five, which is 10. So seven plus 10 which gives us 17. Yeehaw. All right. Everyone go with that. You can, you can give me a thumbs up so I can see it. Let me know you're there. <clears throat> awesome. Okay. All right, let's keep it going. Three, you have negative nine minus three times 11 minus five minus seven plus 20. So we have to handle everything inside those brackets and the inner parentheses first. So here's where we're going first. We're gonna handle this five minus seven. It's the innermost parentheses. And this three 
is connected to everything inside those brackets by multiplication. So negative nine minus three bracket 11 minus and five minus seven is negative two. Close bracket plus 20. Okay. And then we are going to handle everything inside the brackets. So negative nine minus three bracket, and then 11 minus minus two. Remember that minus minus becomes plus. So that becomes 11 plus two, which gives me 13. plus 20. Okay. And then remember that this three is connected to this 13, connected to those brackets by multiplication. So by order of operations, we have to do that multiplication first. So it's going to be this three times 13. And you will have negative nine minus Three times 13, which is 39 plus 20. Okay. And then order of operations again. Subtraction comes first. So negative 9 minus 39 gives me negative 48. plus 20, and negative 48 plus 20 leaves me with negative 28. Okay, everybody good with that? Good, good, okay, awesome. All right, let's move over. There it is. And four. Uh, you can do in the chat, there's a little smiley face or on, um, I guess on the screen, there's like little emoticons you could choose. <coughs> Wherever, oh, like if you click on your menu bar on Zoom and click more, there's something called reactions. And there you can choose your uh, thumbs up if you want, or do it in the chat, either one. Like that. Thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Four. I have the absolute value of negative 14 plus nine over the square root of six squared minus 11. Yeah, so what we see is that in the numerator, you have absolute value, which acts as a set of parentheses, just like parentheses. And then in the denominator, you have a square root, which is also like, it will fall under the parentheses uh, column on PEMDAS. So what we can do for this problem is work the numerator and denominator separately. So that's what we'll do first. Let's go ahead and work the inside of these absolute value bars. So that's our first step. So we're going to have negative 14 plus 9, which is going to give me negative 5. So I will have the absolute value of negative five from the numerator over, then in the denominator, we will handle this exponent, which is six squared. So that square root stays there, but six squared becomes 36 minus 11. Okay, 
And now, still handling the numerator and denominator separately, up top, we have the absolute value of negative five. Does anybody know what the absolute value does to negative numbers? It turns them into a positive. It turns them into positive. Good. So the absolute value of a negative number always turns it into a positive. So this becomes positive five over, and now inside the square root, you have 36 minus 11. So that's what we handle next, which gives me 25. Okay, almost there. Nothing to do in the numerator. Five is good by itself. We just handle that square root of 25. And this will give me five over five, which is just one. And there you go. Everybody go with that one. Okay, cool. Let's go to the next part then. Let's see. Zoom out. Okay. Next one says evaluate the expression for x equals three and y equals negative six. All this wants to do is substitute a number in for x and y and then simplify. So for number five, it wants us to plug three in for x and negative six in for y. So when I do that, when I replace this x, it's going to be parentheses three squared plus, and then when I replace that y, it'll be five parentheses negative six plus two. Okay. And now we have order of, orders of operation again. First thing you see is an exponent. So let's handle that. Three squared gives me nine. And then next up is multiplication. Five times negative six, that gives me negative 30. So this will become nine minus 30 plus two. Okay, order of operations. Subtraction came first, so we do subtraction. Nine minus 30 is going to give me negative 21 plus the two that is there, giving me negative 19. Okay, that's it. Substitute, simplify. Whenever you substitute a number in or whenever you plug a number in, always, always put it in parentheses. Okay, six, same thing. We are plugging the same numbers in for X and Y. So for number six, when I replace that Y, it'll be five times negative six minus three times, replace that x with 3 plus 9. Okay. Order of operations, you have multiplication, multiplication. So let's do those first. 5 times negative 6, negative 30. Negative 3 times 3, negative 9 plus 9. Okay. Once again, order of operations, subtraction comes first, negative 30 minus nine, negative 39 plus nine, and then negative 39 plus nine will give me negative 30. There we go. Everybody good with those two? Mm -hmm.
Okay. Awesome. All right. Next is solving equations for a specific variable, whether it be X or C or Y, whatever letter they give us, right? So here we want to solve for X. Okay. So first up is number seven. You have X plus seven equals negative nine. So if we're gonna solve for X, we wanna get X all by itself. So the first thing we're gonna do is move this seven over to the right side. And the only way to move that seven over is to perform the, op the opposite operation. So since this is plus seven, in order to get to the right side, we must subtract seven. So I'll say minus seven, minus seven. That's how I move that seven over to the right side. And then I'll draw my little process line here. And when I move that seven over, these two sevens, the positive and the negative one, will cancel. And then I will be left with just an X on the left side, and then on the right side, I have negative nine minus seven, which will give me negative 16. There we go. That was it. That was nice. So that's solving for X. Okay. Number eight, you have negative 66 equal to negative 11 C. So for this one, we have to solve for C and we must isolate C by itself. We must get C by itself. So in order to get C by itself, we notice that this negative 11 is attached to the C by multiplication. So once again, in order to move something to the other side of an equation, you must perform the opposite operation. So since 11 is attached to C by multiplication, the opposite of multiplication is division. So in order to move that 11 over, I'm just gonna say divide negative 11, divide negative 11. And when you divide by negative 11, negative 66 divided by negative 11 gives me six. And then on the right side, your negative 11s will cancel and just leave me with C. All right. Everybody go with those two. All right. Okay. Let's keep it moving. All right, number nine. So we have a lot to clean up here. So number nine, you have negative six plus three plus eight X equal to negative one plus 17 X plus 14. So on an equation like this, we wanna clean up the left side and we wanna clean up the right side. Okay, so when I look at the left side, I'm gonna put like terms together. I see that I have two X's on the left side, negative six X, plus eight X. So I'm gonna put these two together. They are the like terms. Negative six plus eight will leave me with positive two X plus the three that is there already. Then on the right side, I look for my like terms and I only have one X on the right side. But what I do notice is I have two numbers, negative one, and 14. So if you ever see a number by itself or just a number without a letter, a number without a variable, these are called constants. So just a plain old number in an equation is called a constant. Okay, so negative one and 14, I put those together and I get 13 plus 17x. Okay. Now, we want to solve for x, so 
it doesn't matter what side you want X to be on. I could put my X's to the left side of the equation, or I could put my X's to the right side of the equation. But X has to go to one side, and the numbers, the constants, have to go to the other side. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my X's to the left. Just normal habit. So I'm going to move this 17 to the left side. I'm going to move that 3 to the right side. So to do that, I'm going to say minus 17x minus 17x. And then in the same move, I'm going to say minus 3 minus 3. And let me draw my process line here. OK. <clears throat> now. Looking at the left side, we see that my threes will cancel and 2x minus 17x will give me negative 15x equal to, and then on the right side, we see that my 17s cancel. And then I'm left with 13 minus three, which will give me 10. Okay. Is it possible that you that you move the the x's to the to the right instead of the left? Yeah, like I said, you can have the x's on the left or the x's on the right. No matter what, we're gonna get the same answer. But it wouldn't be a uh, fifteen positive uh, positive fifteen instead yep. of negative. Exactly. So you should, if you move the x to the right side, you should have positive fifteen, and on the left side, you should have negative ten. Mm -hmm. So, so either way, though, okay. it doesn't matter. We're going to get the same answer. OK. Good question. And then we want x by itself. So we are going to divide by negative 15. OK. And what happens here is x is all by itself. And I'm left with 10 over negative 15, but we can reduce this. 10 over 15 will reduce if I take a five out. Actually, I could show this too. So 10 can be written as five times two and 15, negative 15 can be written as negative five times three, where you see that my fives cancel. And my final answer is a negative two thirds. All right. Everybody good with that one? Is it possible that you can leave it on 10 divided by 15 or no? Uh, no, you, if you can reduce, you want to reduce. Okay. Okay, let's move over and do the next one. Here we go. Okay, so 10, you have two times five X minus one plus six equal to negative four times three minus two X. So we have again to clean up on the left side, clean up on the right side. So what I'm gonna do here is that on the left side, this two is connected to these parentheses. So what I'm gonna do is first distribute this two, multiply this two inside of the terms inside the parentheses. So on the left side, I'll get, I'll get 10 X minus two plus six. And then on the right side, I'll do the same thing negative four times that three and negative four times that negative two X. So this will give me negative 12 plus eight X. Okay, so still some cleaning up to do. So looking at the left side, I have negative two and six. So I have my constants, my numbers, okay. If I put those together, 
and the left side becomes 10x and negative two plus six gives me four. And then on the right side, it stays the same, negative 12 plus eight X. Okay, cool. So now we're in a situation like number nine. Do we want the X on the left side? Do we want the X on the right side? And again, it does not matter. We'll get the same answer, but why not play around this time? I'll put X on the right side. So I'm gonna move that 10 X over there. I'm gonna move this 12 to the left. So I'm gonna say minus 10 X, minus 10 X, and then in the same move, plus 12, plus 12. Put my process line there, and then look at the left side. My 10 X is canceled there, and then I have four plus 12. So that will give me 16. And then on the right side, my 12s cancel, and I have 8x minus 10x, which will give me negative 2x. And then all I have to do is to solve for x. So I'm going to divide by negative 2. And I get 16 divided by negative 2. That is going to leave me with negative 8 equal to x. There we go. Or if you put X on the left side, you have X equals negative eight. But again, does not matter. All right. Everybody go with that one. Any of this uh, refreshing people's memories? Maybe it's been a while. Because now we can get into the fun stuff. Fractions, right? All those lovely fractions. Okay. I'm going to take a quick pause before my <laughs> PTSD vibes, before my daughter pulls out the internet cord. So one moment. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Perfect. So let's get back to it. Uh, here we want to convert an improper fraction to a mixed number. So we see that we have 43 over 7. So in order to convert improper to a mixed number, we use the long division process. So this will become 7 divided into 43. And then we know that 7 can go into 43 six times. Seven times six is 42 with the remainder of one. So now we take our improper fraction by long division. We write it as a mixed number and this will become, so you'll start with the quotient. So we're going to have six and then it's going to be the remainder. So here, quotient and then remainder over the divisor. So it'll be six and one seventh. There you go. Now, if you ever want to rewrite a mixed number back as an improper fraction to check your work as well, let's look at six and one seventh again. So six and one seventh can also be written as six plus one seventh, where now if you wanna put these two terms together, you have to change six into a fraction. So you're gonna put six over one, and then we are going to get a common denominator of seven. So what I'm gonna do is multiply six over one, by seven over seven, and this will become 42 over seven plus one over seven. And since I have the same denominator, I can add my numerators 
and I get 43 over seven, which is what we started with. Okay, but do we have to do that dragged out process of converting from mixed number to improper like that? No, there is a shortcut and it's a pretty cool shortcut. So watch this. If I said six and one seventh, all I'm gonna do here is do six times seven. So six times seven is 42. And then 42 plus one is 43. And all you have to do is take this final number 43 and put it over that denominator of seven. How do you like that? Was that a lot better? Tricks, right? Cheat codes. Yeah, it's a lot easier. It's a lot, and it's a lot nicer, right? But again, to understand this shortcut, you have to understand that long process. So that's just how it works. Okay, cool. Don't worry, we'll do it again down below. Okay, so 12 says convert this mixed number into an improper fraction. Okay, this one's a little tricky because it has a negative in front. So whenever you convert a mixed number, whatever sign's in front, move it to the side. So I'm gonna rewrite this one. I'm gonna take that negative, put it to the side, and in parentheses, I'm just gonna have regular old four and seven elevenths. We worry about that negative at the very end. If you try to convert with the negative, it's going to be incorrect. So now let's use our fraction shortcut trick. And what is four times 11? you get 44. And what is 44 plus seven? There you get 51. So all you have to do here, that negative still out front, is take this 51 and put it over that denominator of 11. So this will be 51 over 11. And then our final answer, bring that negative back in and we get negative 51 over 11. And that is the correct, correct way to do it. If you try to do it with that negative four, so we'll say don't. If you did negative four and seven over 11, negative four times 11 is negative 44. And then negative 44 plus seven is a negative 37. And this would be negative 37 over 11. But if you try to convert this back into that mixed number, it would not work. So do not do that. If there's a negative in front, move it to the side and then bring it in at the very end. Okay, everybody good with those two? So the, like the quick solve only works if it's a positive, right? So no negative? Exactly, okay. exactly, good. Okay, cool, fractions, fractions, now, more fractions. Yeehaw. All right. Simplify the following fractions to the lowest terms. So here we just want to reduce these fractions. So first up is 60 over 54. So best way to reduce fractions is find some common multiple in them. And with 60, we could rewrite that as 10 times 6. And 54, we can rewrite as nine times six. And we see that we have a common 
multiple of six, which means that I can cancel these sixes out. And what I'm left with is 10 over nine. Now, you could try to reduce more, but there are no common multiples in 10 and nine. 10 is five and two, nine is three and three, nothing we can cancel there. So this is done. This one is perfect. Okay. 14, you have 2000 over 2,500. Oh, those are two big numbers, but I have something fun for you. You can cancel zeros out. So I can say this zero cancels that zero and this zero cancels that zero. And we are left with a much nicer fraction to reduce. We are left with 20 over 25. And again, looking at common multiples, I can rewrite 20 as four times five. I can rewrite 25 as five times five. And we see that I have fives that can cancel. And I am left with four fifths. There we go. Everybody good with those two? Okay. Getting crazier with fractions then. All right. Multiply and divide the fractions. All right. So 15, you have negative 8 over 21 divided by 16 over 49. So whenever you have division of fractions, you must flip the fraction or reciprocate the fraction and change the operation of division into multiplication. So when we rewrite this problem, because we don't want to cancel anything until we flip this fraction or reciprocate is the fancy word. So when I rewrite this, we keep the first fraction the same. So we keep that as negative eight over 21. And then you will change the sign from division to multiplication. So we say this now becomes multiplication and you flip the second fraction. So this now becomes 49 over 16. All right. So if you ever need help remembering that process, just remember that you keep the first fraction, you flip the second fraction, and you change the sign from division to multiplication. Best way to remember this is KFC. Look at that, threw in a KFC commercial with mathematics, it's perfect. So keep, flip, change, who's hungry? So KFC guys, keep, flip, change. Okay. Now we can simplify our fractions. We can cross cancel. <laughs> and we look at the numbers across from each other, eight and 16. So I'm just gonna write that out over here. Eight over 16, just to show you what's going on. So if we were to find the common multiples, eight is actually, we're gonna leave eight as eight and one. And we're going to put 16 as 8 and 2. So that means that our 8s will cancel, and I would be left with a fraction of 1 half. So looking over here, when I do 8 and 16, if I say 8 divided from 8, this becomes a 1. 8 divided from 16, that becomes a 2. 
Okay. And of course, yes, there are another other ways to break this down. Eight and 16 can also be four times two and four times four, where your fours cancel. You're left with two fourths, which is still one half. So however you want to go about it, you still get the same answer. Okay. But now let's look at 21 and 49. So now we look at 49 over 21. 49 can be written as 7 times 7. 21, 7 times 3. I cancel out those 7s, and I'm left with 7 thirds. So over here, 7 from 49 is 7. 7 from 21 is 3. And now I'm going to rewrite what I'm left with. The two, I'm going to leave the rewrite the fractions that I have right now. So the first fraction right here is negative 1 over 3 times, and then this fraction is 7 over 2. We cannot reduce anymore, and when we're done reducing, we multiply straight across. So my final answer is negative 7 over 6. There we go. Good stuff, these fractions. Got to love them. We're in business class. Why not change these fractions into decimals, right? Why not? We can do that later. <laughs> okay. So number 16, we have two mixed numbers multiplying each other. One and four elevenths, three and three tenths. So what we're going to do here, in order to do the multiplication process, we are going to change them into improper fractions using the fraction trick. So to convert this first mixed number into improper, we do 1 times 11, which is 11. 11 plus 4 is 15. So this one becomes 15 over 11. And now do the same thing here. 3 times 10 is 30. 30 plus 3 is 33 over 10. OK. Now, before we multiply the two fractions, we want to know, can we cross cancel? So we look at the numbers across from each other, 15 and 10. And again, I'll write it out for you. 15 and 10 can be written as 5 times 3, 5 times 2, 5's cancel, you're left with 3 halves. So this means this 15 becomes a 3 that 10 becomes a 2. And then 33 and 11. Can we write it as 3 times 11? And down below, how about 11 times 1? 11's cancel, and you're left with 3 over 1. So that means that their 33 becomes 3, and 11 becomes one. And here is what we are left with. So the first fraction is three over one times three over two. And you get nine halves. And there we go. Woohoo. All right. Everybody good with those two? Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. All right. So now we add and subtract the fractions. So first up is six and eight elevenths plus three 
and five elevenths. Okay, so when you're adding mixed numbers, oops, look at the fractions. And if the fractions have the same denominator, then we can go ahead and add the fractions and you can add the whole numbers. So let's see what this gives me. So you have six plus three, so that will give me nine. And then you have eight elevenths plus five elevenths. That gives me nine and 13 elevenths. But what is wrong with this fraction? It's not simplified all the way. It's not simplified. It's an improper fraction, right? So what we can do here is just look at that 11 over 13. So, I mean, 13 over 11, convert it into a mixed number, which means you use long division, 11 into 13, multiply by one, you get a remainder of two. And 13 over 11 is the mixed number, one and two over 11. So now what we do with that is we come back to the top here and this is now nine plus one and two elevenths. Well, this will become 10 and two elevenths. That's it. So if you're wondering where that 10 came from, well, remember our breakdown here. One and two elevenths can also be written as one plus two over 11. So it would be the nine plus the one plus the two elevenths, giving me 10 and two elevenths. Okay. Everybody go with that. And of course, there's other ways to think of this. So uh, where could I write this? I could just squeeze this in somewhere. Another way to handle this would be just change these both into improper fractions and add them. So if you did this the improper way, let's say improper method. Six and eight elevenths, six times 11 is 66. 66 plus eight is 74. So that'd be 74 over 11 plus, and then three and five elevenths, three times 11 is 33. 33 plus five gives me 38 over 11. You add those two together and 74 plus 38, is 112. So you get 112 over 11. And then you convert from improper to mixed number 11 into 112, I think goes 10 times. That gives me 110 with two left over. And you get 10 and two 11. Same thing. So again, Multiple methods, you choose which works best. Best. Which method did y'all like? First or second? First one. Or neither. <laughs> Fractions are life, right? Honestly, I didn't understand. <laughs> which one? The 17. The first method. You didn't understand the first one? No. Okay, no, so what we did, so for 17, the first method, we were able to add the two mixed numbers, right? But what we ended up with was an improper fraction, 13 over 11. We can't leave it like that. So what I did was I used long division on 13 over 11 to rewrite it as a mixed number, and 13 over 11 happened to be the mixed number 1 into 11 so if I added one and two elevenths to nine, I got the answer 10 and two elevenths. 
But again, that could be a lengthy process. So if anything, if that was too confusing, use the second method, which seemed a lot better. I could show you another crazy trick, right? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So we'll leave it at those two. OK, perfect. All right, yeah. Second method definitely seems a lot better, a lot faster, less out of the box thinking for fractions. OK, 18. 7 over 15 plus 1 over 2. So for this one, just adding two fractions, we need the same denominator. So for 15 and 2, the common denominator between 15 and 2 is going to be 30. So all I have to do for this one is multiply 1 half by 15 over 15 and multiply 7 over 15 by 2 over 2. Then this will become 14 over 30 plus 15 over 30. And now, since I have the same denominator, I can add the numerators and I get my final answer of 29 over 30. All right, we go with that one. I'm good with that. Yeah, that one was nice, right? <laughs> okay. 19. Yeah, five and five's eights, minus three and seven eights. And it seemed that the consensus was if this is anything like number 17 above it, then the best way I think would handle this is make it, or sorry, simplify it using the improper method. So let's do that. So let's go ahead and change these mixed numbers into improper fractions. So first up is let's do five and five eighths. Five times eight is 40. So five times eight is 40 and 40 plus five is 45. So the first fraction is 45 over eight minus, now remember when converting the second one, you ignore that minus sign. So you're only converting that three and seven eighths. That minus sign stays on the outside. So for the second one, three times eight is 24. And 24 plus seven is 31. So I get 31 over eight. And now, same denominators, you can subtract your numerators. And this, 45 minus 31, what is that, 14? You get 14 over 8, which can then reduce. And to show you how it reduces, 14 I can rewrite as 7 times 2. 8 I can write as 4 times 2. My 2s cancel. And I'm left with 7 fourths. There we go. All right. Everybody go with that. Yeah, I think changing them to improper is perfect. Oh, and if you wanted to change this back to a mixed number, of course, you could do the long division. 4 into 7 goes once. There's 4, remainder 3. So this can be written as 1 and 3 fourths. So either or. OK, 20. Last fraction one here. All right, three fourths plus one fifth minus seven over 10. We want to add and subtract these fractions together. So we need a common denominator between four, five, and 10. Anybody know the common denominator between four, five, and 10? Twenty-eight. 
20. 40 could work, but 20 works. 20 is smaller. So we want to go with the smaller, the least common denominator. So we're going to go with 20. Good. So if I want a common denominator 20, I'm going to multiply 3 over 4 by 5 over 5. And that's going to give me 15 over 20 plus, and then I'm going to get one fifth, multiply it by four over four. That gives me four over 20 minus, and then seven tenths, multiply it by two over two. And that gives me 14 over 20. There we go. We all have a common denominator 20, so we can now add and subtract the numerator. Order of operations, of course, so addition first. So 15 20th plus 4 20th is 19 20th minus 14 20th, and 19 minus 14 gives me 5 over 20, which can reduce. I can rewrite this as 5 times 1 over 5 times 4. Your fives cancel, and we are left with one fourth. All right. Everyone good with that? Yeah, I'm good. All right. Fractions, fractions, fractions. Fractions are your friends. <laughs> okay. All right, next is just rounding. So round these numbers to thousands, ten thousand, hundreds. Okay, cool. So 21. We want to round this decimal number to the thousands place. All right, so with decimals, it is, it goes, let me see. So for decimals, after the decimal, it's tens, let's say tens, and then hundreds, and then thousands. Just gotta put those THs at the end. Tens, hundreds, thousands, and then ten thousands. So I'll just put little commas in between there. So those are your decimal places. Those are your places after the decimal. So for 21, when it says round to the thousands place, that means here is tens, hundreds, thousands. So we want to round to three decimal places, but when we round, since the next number is a six, what's going to happen to that two? It's going to turn into a three. Good. So you get 0 0.813. There you go. Okay. Awesome. All right. And then 22. Round to the 10 thousandths place. So here is tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. Okay. And now, since this number is nine, what's going to happen to that one? He rounds up to two. Rounds up to two. Perfect. There you go. All right. Then last two, I'll zoom out a bit. There we go. All right. This one just wants hundreds. So the next one, tens, hundreds. So that number is a one, which means that nine will stay the same. So we get 7.29. And last, round to the tenths place. 
So 20.384, here is the tenth place. So what does my number become? 20 point what? Four. Four, perfect. Beautiful. All right, guys, that was the review. So if you have any questions over these review notes, let me know. Um, we are done for the day. So if you got questions over anything, please ask. And now you have homework in my math lab. So you can get started on the review homework now. So if you got questions, stick around. If not, see you on Thursday, guys.